Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. In today's video, I'm going to share 23 projects I created using the Ho 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 Paper Pumpkin Kit, October 2022, by Stampin' Up. I'll start out with the ones that are similar to the directions here. Let me go ahead and move my light a little bit. There, that's much better. And then I'm going to show you how I varied these projects in different ways. And then we'll even make something. I'm going to open up another kit for you and you're going to see using what I, you know, where these supplies came from and what comes in a typical kit. Now, if you subscribe with me to Paper Pumpkin, which is a great deal, I think, and it is $23.50 and you get a, a kit that includes shipping and you get this fun kit each month, you will get these videos from me every month sharing projects that I create and lots of alternatives. And you're going to get an all-inclusive stamp set. You're going to get to see typical things that will come in a kit when I open it up. However, if you subscribe now before November 10th, you're not going to get this particular kit. You are going to get what's called the, let's see what the next one's called, From the North Pole. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. It's called From the North Pole. They don't really tell you what's going to be in it except for it says, you know, there's, there's actual bags and like it'll be some a, a tag kit, I believe. Right? And there's some bags that you can get as an add-on for like $4, I believe. So it's going to coordinate with this kit, but we don't know much about it yet. Right? It's just called From the North Pole. Because after the 10th of the month, you no longer get the kit from the, from this kit. You're no longer going to get the Ho-Ho-Ho kit like I'm showing you here. You're going to get the next kit. So you always get the next kit when you subscribe. Now, those of you that are Scan and Cut fans are going to be very happy because... About two weeks ago, about two weeks ago now, I showed you how to cut out Santas with your scan and cut. It was just fantastic how many I made. So that was, I, I could just go on and on and on. I have Santas all over the place. Look at this. I have Santas sticking on my ribbons. I have Santas laying all over the place. I could have made 100 projects and, and titled this 100 projects to create with this kit because the Santas are from this kit. So basically, it's my secret weapon. Oh, better not say the word with the W word on YouTube. They might, not, they might not like that word. But it is my secret strategy to getting more out of paper pumpkin kits. Use your scan and cut and then make multiples. So let me show you now. What I would like to do is compare Santa from the kit versus Santa we made from scan and cut. And when I open up the stamps, you're going to see, unless I have stamps. I don't think I have the stamps thing here, but I will open up and you'll see the stamp set. So here's, just going back to the instructions again, I, I never really make anything just like the kit, but we had some, we had some little ho-ho-ho things and some little, these are called like the pool party color of cards. The first thing I like to do is I like to turn over the instructions and see what the coordinating colors are, but then I kind of just did my own thing anyway with whatever color paper I had. So the coordinating colors are Bermuda Bay, Cherry Cobbler, Crumb Cake, Early Espresso, Shaded Spruce, Sweet Sorbet and Berry Vanilla. Sweet Sorbet is very similar to Poppy Prade. And there's Berry Vanilla. So I was using Poppy Prade to color my Santas. All right, so here's the Santa that came in the kit. And you you could stamp. There was already a little hat on there. And you just stamped the black outline. Or actually, you, you stamp using Early Express the little stamping spot. But then here's what you could do with the scan and cut. You can stamp the Santa, cut them out. I cut out so many of these, and then you can also cut background layers. So which do you like better? The one that's here, the one that this one's a little bit more centered. The one with the cherry cobbler hat or the poppy parade hat. And now the one that they, they had in the kit does have little eyebrows and maybe better little cheeks and stuff. It's a little more detailed. But the one that you, you can stamp yourself, you can color any way you want. All right, so let me say hi to you guys. This is going to be casual. I know my camera is shaking. Let's see, my little tripod shaking, but it's going to be casual as I, it shakes a little when I try to say hello. So hello, Janet, who was the first one here, and then Melissa from Texas, Hilda, and Deborah from New South Wales, where unfortunately you don't get the paper pumpkin kits, but that's okay. Sometimes you get them a few times a year. They do, we do paper pumpkin around the world. This is what, by the way, what it looks like and how it's shipped to you in a little... Make sure my address isn't on there. 
and a little plastic, and then they just slap the label on it, and then it gets shipped to you. All right, so it's pretty cool that it gets shipped to you that way. So Melody, hello, Paula Brown, Terry. All right, Hammond, Louisiana. Barbara's from Hammond, Louisiana. Everybody's talking about where they're from. This is cool. Mary from Kansas City. Hello, Linda from Stamp, Cut, and Create. And Mary likes both. Okay, Cherry Cobbler's your favorite red. Melissa, that's your favorite red. I think Poppy Parade is my favorite red. Real red's pretty cool, too. Anyway, so let's go back to this. I have some more to say hello to, but I'm just going back to the pool party cards. So for this, I just used my Scan and Cut, one layer, the snowflakes that came in the kit, some extra gems, and some Celebrate Everything Designer Series paper. Check out these really cool envelopes with the stars on them. That's going to coordinate with this piece here. And now let me show you the second card. Okay, this second card is one. These ones are similar in that this one is the way that it came, the cherry cobbler background. And then what I did here is I took the inside of the envelope. Let me see if I can find one of that style envelopes so you can see. Oh, no, maybe that wasn't the inside of the envelope. Where did I get this piece? I think that was just the card. Let's see. Yeah, that's just that was just the card design. So I just took that card design and put this on it. So just to change it up a little, it was this card design, but then I did this little frame on this card design. So I just want to explain how I got these. Let me put these over here when I'm done with them so you can see. So you can change it up by putting that card design, because I just thought it gave it more color and a little piece of the extra envelope. So I was cutting the envelopes apart for different projects. So you can see there's some cherry cobbler and sweet sorbet cutting them up for the envelopes. And then you got Santa Claus is coming to town. That I stamped that in shaded spruce. Okay, you saw these envelopes, which are fantastic. Bermuda Bay, here's another. So this is another one. The ho-ho-ho has vellum behind it, which I love. And I love the little scene. And I used black instead of early espresso. That was another change I made. The black, there's an early espresso stamping spot, but I just thought it would look better with black for this silhouette. Plus, I have a better... I have better luck when I use the full stamping pad versus the little stamping spots, which are very juicy. But if that's all you have is a stamping spot, you might need to dry it out a little because they're really juicy. And it might not do the trick like, as well as a big stamping pad. That's my own opinion. But it's a great way to get a lot of colors in your collection and to try out colors. So the early espresso is what was recommended, but I used the Memento Black. All right, Sheila from Ohio. Lisa from Ontario, Canada. Sonia from Woodbridge, Virginia. Hello, hello, hello. Bipri. Linda from Oklahoma. And Deborah saying she loves her scan and cut. Now, the, I love these envelopes too. These are really fun. So she said, "I want." I, how did you do in your craft fair, Linda? You said you said you. Yeah. She made up these already and had customers take them, she was saying. All right. Hope your craft fair went well. This is what you do with the background. Now, you can take these and just put crumb cake onto crumb cake. But I, I did that and thought that was so boring. And I was like, who thought of that, you know? I mean, I'm just honest. I was like, okay, it's better than not having it. But I was like, what? Crumb cake on crumb cake. So this is the way the kit was, sort of, although I made it horizontal. You can see that's sort of the way the card was. I just kind of do my own thing. I never even really look at the instructions. I just sort of make my own cards. I just start picking up the stuff. I make my box of crafty goodness, and I start picking up the stuff and making one card at a time. Sometimes I'll, sometime I'll go through my creative process with you. But really, this is just, I said, I looked at that and was like, it's tone on tone. It's still cute. It's a cute background. But I thought, let me put a piece of paper behind it. And so I used to celebrate everything designer series paper. Let me show you a bigger piece of that. Let me see if I can find the piece. Celebrate everything has been like my favorite thing lately. My go-to paper. And you're going to see how I used a lot of it later. Oh, where's the piece that I needed to put the stripes on it? I'm sure... Sure, I have one in here somewhere. I think it's the back of this one. Yeah, here we go. It's this piece here. Oh, nope, that's not it either. Where is that really cool paper? 
Here it is. It's this piece here. Okay, so you celebrate everything as a host-only pack of paper. You get 48 sheets. It has polka dots on the back. 48 sheets in a pack. It's fantastic. Uh, this is probably my fifth or sixth pack of it. I use it. I used it like for the Jingle 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 series. If you missed that series, I mean, we made loads of cards in that series. I put Santa on a couple of them, which I'll show you now. But I mean, I used them for that. I used it for lots of little treat holders. And I love 48 sheets in a pack because I don't feel bad using it. Anyway, I put that behind the crumb cake. I put it on a Bermuda Bay background. I think these are my favorite designs after doing that, making it pop. Or this, this one, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's a toss-up. Okay, and this one, I took it. And they also had smaller pieces. I'm trying to find the other bigger piece. Now, I think this one is. These I like how, the, I like how these came out with the Bermuda Bay behind them or this paper behind it. So what do you guys think, left or right here? Let's fold, let's not have the envelope getting in the way of the vote. So left or right, or just say one or two, left or right. These are my two favorites because I like putting something behind these other than the same color. Okay, so anyway, this is that paper, Celebrate Everything. And I put some Wink of Stella on the Mary. Okay. Okay, two. Okay, you guys like two better too, awesome. So you like the pink, and this is this is actually me using Poppy Prayed in there. And then, of course, because like, that's part, Poppy Prayed is part of that paper. All right, so these are other little elements that came in the kit. And, the, and then these had a layered, both of these had layered Santas, like layered with the scan and cut. You could tell they're from the scan and cut because they're layered. And that, like the ones in the kit weren't layered. Now for this one, I put Christmas all the way. And Christmas all the way came from, Christmas came from the paper pumpkin kit and so did Santa. So did all these little elements. All the way came from Jingle, Jingle, Jingle. Because you can like jingle, like it came from that other stamp set. Jingle all the way. So I took the all the way and put Christmas all the way. Okay. So anyway, this is another one of those elements. And this, the, sometimes they gave you, they gave you like the O or they gave you, the Santa, which is cool because at the end I was like, why do I have so many O's left over? Let me find the cards like this. Okay, here you go. I can compare these. So what you can do is use, they gave you an O or a bunch of extra Santas. So you can write joy with J-O-Y or you could put the O, J-O, and O would be the Santa in the middle. So I prefer the joy with the, with the J-O-Y like that, but I didn't have enough of those. So I just started putting Santa in the middle. I still like the Santa on each card, and that's why I kind of did it like this. I put Santa down here because I still like the joy and the Santa together. Now, this was a piece. I'm pretty sure it's a piece of my envelope. Let's look where I got that. Yeah, here you go. So that I, I took the envelope, cut it apart, little piece of celebrate everything paper behind it. That paper you get with your host rewards when you shop with me. So when your order is... $150, you can get that that paper, the 48-pack of paper, as your host rewards. Okay, yes, yeah, Sonia was saying her thing was fuzzy. Glad you went back in. It looks like everybody voted for two. Oh, no, not really. Wow, we have, okay, right? Holy cow, lots of participation there. Karen, thank you for helping with her with the video, and thank you, Terry, for your comment. Yep. Okay, two, and then it's like, then we have... R two again, or the right, two, 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 two. Love the cards, two, one, two, one, two, two. Okay, so two is definitely, you guys like that card better for sure than that card. All right, now there's another one of the joy cards, and I just added some extra little snowflakes to this one, and that is on crumb cake. Now the difference is sometimes you take the paper pumpkin kit, and you're thinking, okay, well, these cards are kind of light, and they are. So you, you get the kit and you, like, see, it's kind of light. It's not like the same cardstock as we would have in our cardstock pack. Then you take a piece of cardstock and you make a card with the same elements and you're like, wow, this is heavy duty. Why is this heavy? I haven't even done the middle yet. I mean, I haven't even put the middle of the sweet. This is sweet sorbet, by the way. This is sweet sorbet, the color. But I haven't even put the white part in the middle yet. And this is like way heavier than this because it's just a heavier weight cardstock. So if there was any disadvantage I would ever say about getting the kit is that the only thing about getting the kit is it's not going to be as, the cards aren't going to be as sturdy as your regular Stampin' Up! cardstock. 
However, as you can see, when you take your own Stampin' Up! cardstock, you can, you can use all the elements from the kit and you have the best of both worlds. So that's why, instead of making the nine cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I made 23 cards from one kit using everything up. And this is all I have left. Scraps from the envelopes, that's it. Little, I even use these little scraps from the, I have a, oh, I do have a couple O's. I do have a couple O's left, but no J's. We could do something with the ho, ho, ho. I have a few Christmases left. I mean, that's it. I have nothing else left, and that's the whole kit. So I made 23 patty. When I run out of stuff, I have loads of Santas. I have Santas all over the place. But I ran out of, like, the little elements from the kit to make this. And I was trying, like, I ran out of snowflakes and little, little embellishments and things. All right, so I really do like the way these came out with these pieces of the envelope and these little backgrounds and that celebrate everything paper behind it. This is the same kind of concept again, but using shaded spruce cardstock. So you just use your own cardstock and you get a lot more out of it. Here's a happy, happy card. So this one uses, I guess I'm just gonna show you all the cards first before I show you the 3D projects as I look for that envelope that this one uses the envelope liner. Here we go. So I took the envelope liner and see how it goes all the way down, which is pretty awesome. And I was able to use all these pieces of the envelope and make your own card backgrounds. And these are things I do, by the way, like all the time when I get a paper pumpkin kit. It's not just like, oh, what should I do with this kit? It's like I immediately just start cutting apart the envelopes, cutting apart the cards, making my box of crafty goodness. And then once I get a whole box of stuff with like little things, like I had done the scan and cut video, I had all of these little Santas, I get a whole bunch of things. I do all my stamping first. I pop all the pieces out. I trim everything down. Then I sit there and make the cards after I have all the pieces. And then I can just go, I wanted one of these, and I want one of those, and I just start making the cards. And it's very easy to make. I do it all like using them just one day. Okay, here's some. The only thing extra I do to this card here is I put the, these are all elements from the kit, but these are little are little snowflakes. And whenever you see this, this kind of, or it's called adhesive back stars. So these didn't come from the kit. This card came from the kit. The Santa stamp, the, the Santa and reindeer stamp, the snowflake, this, this, everything came from the kit except for the adhesive back stars. And here's another one like that. And sometimes I found that little pool party thing to put in the middle. Sometimes I didn't. In the scan and cut tutorial I did a couple weeks ago, you can check that out on this YouTube channel. It's called Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks, Cutting Out Stamped Images. In there, I showed you how to cut out sentiments as well. So not just the Santa, you can cut out the word Mary. Okay, which brings me to my next set of cards and I'm sticking on things. Things are sticking on me. Ah, I'm stuck on you. So here are cards I showed in that tutorial. Here you go. So you can see how you could just cut out the Mary sentiment. This has a 0 0.08 outline distance as opposed to a 0 0.04 outline distance around the Santa. And the back of the Santa has a 0 0.08 outline distance. These cards are super festive, and all I did was take Merry Christmas from the Paper Pumpkin Kit, Santa, and I just cut it out with my scan and cut. I actually cut the rectangles out with my trimmer directly, and then I just cut that out and that out with the scan and cut. This here, this one is Santa Express Paper. This is Celebrate Everything Paper, this one, and a Granny Apple Green background. Let's see if I put anything. Santa Claus is coming to town on the inside. Okay, now this one is, I did use some deckled rectangles so that, that layers up. This is mint macaron, and I use lots of kinds of paper. So this is gingham cottage back there. This is celebrate everything with the granny apple green. Then the inside layer is Santa Express. Then we have the paper pumpkin elements, some adhesive back stars. I super, I love this card. I don't know what it is about it. It's probably because it's like so many kinds of greens. Okay, and we already showed you that one. Let's see if I put anything inside this one. Yep, Santa Claus is coming to town with another deckled rectangle. I love deckled rectangles, and I was using them all the time in my last workshop series. All right, let's see what else we have. We have a few 3D items. We have a few more cards. I'm just going to finish my little card stack. All right, I know I have a couple more. I even have Santas everywhere. Okay, so this is the from the Jingle 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 series. 
This is Tis the Season to be Jolly. And then all I did for that one was put the Santa on this card. I think it made the card just having Santa on the card because you got Jolly Old St. Nick on there. And then we have Tis the Season to be Jolly again with the deco rectangles, and I added Santa to this card. And another deco rectangle on the inside. This color is polished pink. Celebrate everything paper. Yeah, don't you love the happy Santa, Pat? Thank you. Pat loves happy Santa. And hello, Paula. Oh, she's already, she already said hello earlier, but she's watching from Wyoming. Okay, and yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if your things are blurry, it's because of the way it's streaming. Sometimes it streams and gets a little better. All right, so then I started playing around with some concepts that I will show you. I'll show you this one, this little envelope. Let me just, I'm just going to grab a piece of paper, any paper that's Christmassy. Let's use, this is the paper that, this one always looks good. I don't know, because it has a dark color. So we're just getting that ready to show you when I get to that point. All right, now let me show you the 3D items. I didn't put anything in my box yet. This is a little box. What I did is I took this, this piece from the card, and I just made a box. I, I decided that I wanted one inch to the, on the sides of the box. Okay, so that's what I decided. I, I wanted to use the panel just as it was. I liked the panel as it was. And I decided to make a one inch edge around the box. So I added the panel to the one inches around the side. And then I made the bottom of the box one sixteenth of an inch smaller in Bermuda Bay because it matched the lid. Okay, and then I can put lots of Christmassy treats in there once I get my Christmas candy. And there's that pool party gem that I was telling you about. Holly Jolly is one of the stamps from the set. I love that. You can put Holly Jolly with any of the Santas. And this is, well, I call these sour cream containers, but they're, actually I found out they're called Humbug. So we're gonna make those in my series that I'm doing right now. And my series I'm doing right now on YouTube is called Cheerful Basket. And I have a kit. So check out my website. Oh no, it's not on my website, is it? Check out my newsletter. If you don't have my newsletter, um, ask me about the kit because I still have a few. You can still order kits, but I only sent it to my newsletter. I didn't think I put it in the bottom of this video. I might have put it in the bottom of the video for the cheerful basket. Okay, and now these are double fold treat pouches. They're perfect for your little Santas. Look at that. You can put Mary, put the little Santa in there, and then one of the one of the stamps from the set is called Deliver To. And you can put who it's to, and you can put a Ghirardelli chocolate square or two tea bags in there. And we'll go ahead and make that real quick. I, this is the Candy Cane Lane, I believe the paper's called. I'm just using some chai apple tea. Deliver to. I've been making diaper folds a lot, but I like these better because they hold two. And then here you can take this. This is the same similar bookmark I showed you how to make in the Jingle 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 series. I believe it's the same size. Yes, we made this in the video. We made this in the last part of my Jingle 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 series, but then I added a Santa to it, and I think it just comes out better. So those are my 3D projects. And like I said, I could just go on and on and on, putting Santa on everything, and you would have lots of 3D projects. And I probably will, but I just had to stop. Stop myself because I ran out of embellishment. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take... Let's go ahead. And I'm just going to use the trimmer for this whole thing for scoring and cutting. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just cut a six by, this is the scoring tool, by the way, and this is the blade. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut and make some room. Before I open that paper pumpkin kit, I'm just going to show you how to make this fold real quick. All right, there we go. So you want six by six paper. Okay, there you go. And what's nice is your trimmer has a little ledge there that's automatically six by six. You just push it against the ledge and you have a six by six. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab a spatula and you're just gonna turn over your paper, use the corner of your little trimmer and you're just gonna fold, you're just gonna make a triangle. Okay, and now take your little spatula, bone folder, or something, and turn this into a triangle. 
Okay, we may as well do another one. I do a lot of these when I'm watching TV. Okay. All right, so we have triangle. Now, you're going to go ahead and take your triangle, triangles. We're going to use the trimmer now, I mean, the, the scoring tool now. So you can see that the trimmer comes with a blade and a scoring tool. I prefer to pretty much use Simply Scored. Let me go ahead and tilt my camera a little bit. I prefer to use the Simply Scored tool, but I just don't have it right here with me. Even though I have two of them, I just don't have it with me. So we're going to go ahead and use this. So we're just going to, so this is, if you're using Simply Scored, you could just score both of these at once, but we'll just do one at a time. So we're going to say, let's see what the measurements are. Two and three quarters, I believe. Yeah, two and three quarters. So go, go to two and three quarters. See how each of these are a quarter? So there's two, right? One quarter, two quarter, three quarters. Put the point out to, the, put the point out to two and three quarters. And you're just going to do that, OK? And then the other, the other measurement is five and three quarters. So you could do it, you could do it. You could go out to five and three quarters like this, right? And I'll show you another way to do it in a minute. Let's just, this one's a little bit harder to see. So I think, so you could go out to five and three quarters and just do the little, ch -ch -ch. but I, I find it just easier. Let me just show you the other way. I find easier just to kind of flip it over and just do the two and three quarters again. That's what I find easier because you can actually see this one a lot better. Okay, the only thing about using the trimmer to score is because it just ends up being, you end up like sometimes mistaking the score tool for the blade and then cutting things. Anyway, go ahead and open this up, right? And then you're gonna open up your triangle and you're gonna fold it like this. Get your little spatula again. This is just burnishing the edges, use your bone folder. And then do this one, do the, get that score line. Okay. And then you're going to adhere, you know, adhere this a little bit, adhere this a little bit to that, and boom. Is that awesome or what? Now, instead of the diaper fold, which I've been teaching you, you get two, you can put two tea bags in this instead of one. With the diaper fold, which I'll show you next, you only get one. So I'm not going to adhere this because I want to prove a point here. And it's easier to, to show you this point I'm trying to make while this is not adhered. So we have the same piece of six by six. You saw we started out with a six by six. Now let's just do a diaper fold, the thing I've been making for many years on my channel. First learned about it at one of my, you know, somebody swap with me. You go left, you have your still, you have your still same triangle, right? You go left, you go right, and then you go, and then you kind of wiggle it. You're going to take this paper and flip it down. And you're going to just kind of push this till it kind of hides up under the little lip there, right? Like that. So that way it's kind of hidden under there, that little, that little panel that's across. Now you're going to take this. Do, do, do. Do -do. So now we have a diaper fold, which is awesome. I love these. I've been making these for so long after taking apart one that someone gave me. And then this one, my upline gave me, Hattie. And it doesn't seem that, right that this should be used in the same piece of paper, the same size paper. It just doesn't seem right because this one, all you have is that, and you still can put, can I put one tea bag in it? Let's grab the tea bags. Got to do visuals here. So you could put the one tea bag in your diaper fold, and that's it, or one Ghirardelli chocolate. But you could see the back, that's kind of cool, right? But the same piece of paper, you can put two. Where's my other little? I'll put this other. I like, I like these twinings and Tazo teas because Tazo or whatever, how you say it, because they, um, they're individually wrapped. Okay, and then you would hear the back. This one, you would hear the back, you know, like that. Or you could put a ribbon around the whole thing. Pretty cool. 
All right, so if that didn't make, if that didn't convince you, let me just show you that I'm just gonna prove it to you one more time. <laughs> right, there's our pieces of paper. We have six inches by six inches. Gotta love the Japanese. They started doing all this all this paper folding that we all get to copy or case, we call it casing, copy and sharing everything. 2.75, flip it over or two and three quarters. I'm just used to doing the 0.75 because of the decimals, right? Because of the scan and cut. Okay, open it up, find the score lines, find the score line. Now, it's kind of harder to find the score line on these than it is. There we go. And the simply scored. Burnish the edges. I usually use, I usually do that side over that side. It doesn't matter. Right? And boom. And you have the little pouch. So we'll call it a double fold tea pouch or something, as we could call it. Okay, versus. Versus, right, this one. One piece of paper, six by six. Still make the triangle, left, right. Wiggle, 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 right? You're wiggling until that is hiding under there. Boom. And that's how it's done. And that's what you do with all that paper. That's why you get yourself a pack of Celebrate Everything paper. And you can just go to town and make these for all year round. Because that paper has all the patterns. Christmas, New Year's, it has all the patterns. All right. So what you've been waiting for, I'm sure, especially if you're new to Paper Pumpkin, is what comes in a Paper Pumpkin kit? Okay. Oh, thanks, Margaret. I'm glad you're having fun. I always like to craft a little during these videos, you know, so I don't just show you my projects. I want to show you how to how to replicate things. And feel free to replicate anything I'm showing you. I mean, that's what crafting's all about, right? Hello, Gloria, Frida, and Charlotte. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up a typical paper pumpkin kit. This is not what you're gonna get if you subscribe today, which I hope you do subscribe with me. Or if you used to subscribe to, with me and now you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna subscribe again, then come on back, come on back. And you can subscribe again, and then you can suspend or cancel your account at any time. You don't have to stay subscribed. It can come and go. You might be like, it's Christmas time. I want to make tags. I want to do holiday things. So I want to subscribe again. Then subscribe again, right? And then, then you could say maybe after the new year, okay, it's not right for me. And if you're not sure if you're subscribed, click on my link and go check if I'm your demonstrator. Because a lot of times people just go, I tell them all about Paper Pumpkin. They go to Paper Pumpkin directly and... They think they subscribe with me, but they didn't. Unless you use my link, you didn't subscribe with me. And if you didn't get a thank you card or, or you know, a welcome card to Paper Pumpkin from me, that means you did not subscribe with me because I would never ignore you and not thank you in an email and send you some of my swag or my cards. Anyway, here's what a kit looks like. So every kit comes with an exclusive stamp set. So scan and cut users, start drooling. Yes, you can always use your scan and cut almost every month to cut out these things. So we, this is like a scan and cut dream because look at those nice black lines. Then I showed you how to use different colors blends to make Santa and different color skin tones and things. I didn't even get to the snowflake. You could do all kinds of things with the snowflake. Oh, let me turn this over so it's not backwards. Okay, you could see the Mary we cut out. And I used Christmas, but if you want to go with the holiday, you can just use Happy Holiday or Mary or... You could do holiday over here. You don't have to use the Christmas. And then Santa Claus is coming to town. What else? What's the other one say? Tis the season to be jolly. That's pretty cool. And I already have that from the other stamp set. So I like it. And there's your, that's your little Santa sleigh. Now, if you are, then you always get a stamping spot. And if it's your first time subscribing to Paper Pumpkin, you are also going to get a stamping block as a free gift from Stampin' Up. Okay. A stamping block means 
it's not like an acrylic block that you would stick these two to stamp with. And you only get that once. You only get the free gift once when you subscribe. Now, if you subscribe again in the future, you don't get the free gift again if you're using the same email address as before because they consider you a returning subscriber. The free stamping block, acrylic block, is only for new subscribers. And don't expect it to be as thick as the ones from that I've been showing you on my videos. They're not like thick as these kind of stamping blocks, but it's probably half the, half the height of these. But you need them, nonetheless. Oh, look, that's where my spatula went. I was wondering where you were. Sorry. My, I'm talking to my spatula and my stylus. These things, like, disappear constantly. My mom made me a, a case, like a dust cover for my scan and cut, and then she made a little pocket on it. But, and it's to keep me from losing my tools, but then I don't keep the dust cover on it, so then I still lose my tools. I really need to just Velcro them onto the side. All right, so here is the typical contents of a paper pumpkin kit. You will always get your set of, you're going to get a nice piece of cardboard. Save that for your, you know, shipping if you ship things a lot. You get your set of instructions, which I, I've never opened, so let's go ahead and open them. <laughs> I usually never open these. So like, isn't that cool? So you can see where to put the little dots of glue and how to do and how to make each kit. So now if you just want to do that, it will still spark your creativity. So if you're thinking, oh, but I don't like to make things from kits. Well, what if you're in a crafting rut? You know, we've all been there. You need some crafting mojo. And you're just like, I don't know what to make. So you start out by, this is my advice to you. You start out by making it exactly like it shows you here for the first set. So you do one of each. One, two, three. Do one of each, follow the instructions. Now your creativity juices are flowing all over the place. And now you're like, I can put him over there, put Santa over here, put the sleigh over here. Then you have all this crafty mojo. Or just do it as it is. I mean, who wouldn't like these cards? Linda was just saying that her customers loved them. And she just made those too. Yeah, so thank you, Jean. Jean's one of my team members. So you're too late for, Pat is too late for October's kit now. You can only get refills if you're a subscriber. So I believe there's refills available to subscribers, but not the actual kit itself. And this one is accounted for already because it's a team member's. This one is going to a team member of mine who didn't get the stamps, but only got the refill. And this is some, some Stampin' Dimensionals. That's why I'm not going to craft with it. Usually what I do is I open up the kit and craft with it, but that's why today I just used some other papers because I wanted to keep her kit intact. All right, so you have this cardboard. Now check this out. I just don't want to mess up the stuff, right? Beautiful snowflakes. Okay, now these, these alone... If we sell them, oop, that one got a little messed up. If you if you get snowflakes from us, then you would be getting snowflake embellishments. And we do sell something similar to these, but we only have like two sheets of them and you'd get the whole pack. So that's a great value because you can also use punches and get this extra pieces of your snowflakes and put them on things, right? Now here is these cherry cobbler and sweet sorbet sentiments, right? Here are some glue dots. I'm not a big fan of glue dots, but sometimes they work better for the vellum than anything else. I actually did use glue dots this time. Okay, and then you have these little elements. Now, this is where I was telling you that you stamp Santa onto these little pieces. So I was asking you, do you like cherry cobbler better? So you go ahead and stamp your Santa on like that. So that's pretty cool, right? But I ended up making all the extra Santas, as you know. And then these little banners, pool party, cherry cobbler, little pieces, joy little frames. Now, we only used the outside of the frame for this design, but then I took the inside of the frame and I used them as well. Yes, so for the November, Mary's saying for the November kit, for the tags, and I hope I'm right with the tags. So maybe Jean, since Jean's here, my team member, uh, it is tags, right? The North Pole kit, the one that says from the North Pole. Actually, it'll, that little paper doesn't say it, does it? Pretty sure it's tags because there's bags that you can get bags as a separate add-on for four dollars, and I'm pretty sure they go with the tags. Anywho, the, here are the here are the cards. You get nine cards. You get all these beautiful card elements. This is like a typical kit, right? Not not every kit you would get this, but these little lat we used to sell lattice, and what and they, those you would have to buy as a separate pack, and they almost look like this the lattice that we sold. Well, not almost. They were actually like lattice 
straight, but they were crumb cake. But what I mean is all these little things, if you were to buy separately from us, they would all cost money. We don't sell these little things separately. All the kits are uniquely designed. Okay, these beautiful little pieces. And I think they're designed like, if you ask me, they're probably designed like a year in advance. But they end up going with a lot of our other products. Look at these little things. These are the little vellums to put behind the ho, ho, ho. Here are some little banner thingies to stamp Santa Claus is coming to town. And the Mary and the holiday and stuff. Here are some cherry cobbler cards. And then he, the beautiful envelopes. So whenever we have a card kit that comes with envelopes, so that you're ready to go, you can mail out your things. Now this is crumb cake stripes in the inside, but I used the other side of those. I thought that was really pretty. And then these with the little stars, the little Bermuda Bay sky. I was so happy to use my Bermuda Bay because I have loads of that cardstock, and only the kindest gnomes or the gnomes for the holiday. I forget what the name of the paper is. The paper with the gnomes uses Bermuda Bay. But the color wasn't used in a lot of things. So I was happy to have Bermuda Bay. So I got to use a lot of my Bermuda Bay cardstock. And there's the paper there. And this this one, I'm, I'll show you how to make this container in my in my series. Coming up. The Holly Jolly container. Or I just, you put like Tic Tacs or jelly beans in there. The sour cream container, I should say. So that's what you get. So I hope to see some new subscribers, or, you know, that get the idea now and go, oh, that's easy. Where is the easy button? And just once, you know, you want to put together a kit, you want to be crafty, but you don't want to get like a whole room full of stuff like I have. Well, a whole house full of stuff like I have. That's fine. We work up to it. I Crafts bring me great joy. Here we go. This is the add-on. Okay, it says, I had not, I had not seen this side here. This is gorgeous. It says, North Pole Sacks add-on. Do more with your holiday crafting. Create charming Christmas gift bags with the North Pole Sacks add-on available at our online store. I believe it was like $4 and you get like 10 bags. I don't know. These are really cool bags. And look how they coordinate with those envelopes from this month. Okay. And then this is it giving us the recipe for this. It's telling us the recipe to make this side, to make this. Now, I'm not sure if this is, means that this stuff's going to be in the kit or it's just showing you how to use the sack. But so the kit is a surprise for all of us. I'm not sure. All they all they show us is this box and this little hat. So there'll be something. Yeah, it's going to coordinate. So that's good. Tags. Good. Everybody's saying tags. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. This is the Paper Chef, and I hope you enjoyed looking at my alternative projects. And all these, all of you subscribers, I hope you have made your kits by now. And if you get some refills, you can try out some of my alternative projects for for yourself. Feel free to use any of these ones, and I'll be taking some still photos soon and doing some little videos so you'll have a better look at these. So that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef.